Okay, so this is the model, uh, O gauge model that I've made. Uh, at the moment, I'm just showing that it's got some lights in it, so they're actually um, kind of add some atmosphere. So I can have this on, so it's sort of got like a night view. Uh, I'll put the main light on in a minute so you can see more of this model. And these lights, I'm going to make them in such a way that they can be controlled by uh, a small microprocessor board. So I can have them uh, go on and off in different sequences. It's not terribly hard to do that kind of thing. Okay, so let me just uh, stop this video a second and I'll put the lights on and you can see, I'll show you what all the different parts are. Okay, so this is the model that I've created. I actually call this Applewood. I'm not aware of any Applewood a place in England called Applewood, so I kind of quite like the name of it. So let me just go through this uh, bit by bit. So these buildings here have been uh, created using a, an inexpensive filament printer. And they have been printed in more than just one part per building, which I'm going to explain later on in a different video. And of course they have been um, painted with acrylic paints as well so you're gonna find you're gonna have to kind of finish things off um, so all of these buildings are uh, modeled using a filament printer now I designed these from my imagination apart from this particular one here in the middle the terrace house I actually found a photograph on the internet and I use that to um, create a basis for that terrace house. So they do actually have printed um, paper signs. Uh, all the signs on them are actually to scale. Uh, British O gauge, which is seven millimeters to a foot. And some of them do actually have interiors. Um, such as the fish and chip shop and uh, Mr. Jones, the grocers. The cobblestones um, are all 3D printed, again using a filament printer. They go all the way along, so is the actual gate. You'll notice that there are some um, net curtains in a lot of these buildings they're just merely paper but I find that when you put a light behind them they kind of they look very realistic uh, we've got another building here this is the first building I actually successfully made um, Duncan's Engineering Limited incidentally the brickwork on these buildings is two O gauge as well. In fact, what I did is I went on the internet and I found out how big uh, an imperial brick was uh, rather than a metric British brick, uh, an imperial British brick, and then I rescale that to um, O gauge, British O gauge scale, or seven millimeters to the foot, as they say. Uh, the railing on this has been printed on a filament printer as well. It's actually quite delicate. Uh, you probably notice I've not put it all on yet, uh, but I will be finishing that off. And then we've got little things like this. I did mention resin in some cases. So these little crates were actually printed in resin. It was just easier to do from a finishing point of view. I could have printed them on a filament printer uh, it's just that with resin, you don't have to do as much finishing off uh, in the ends, which is kind of makes things a lot easier. Uh, we've got various buildings here. Again, totally made on a filament printer. Okay. Um, now, we also have uh, a locomotive. Now, this is the first, uh, well, this is a the prototype. Now, what happened with the locomotive? I did not design the locomotive. The original designer did in the 1890 or whatever, 1870 or whatever. This is a 
uh, NER Y7 locomotive. This is just basically my test model which I first started working on and it does kind of run but there's no motor in it or anything. This however, this particular locomotive, it's not quite finished yet, is one that does actually run. Now what might surprise you is that all this um, rail here, all this track has actually been 3D printed as well. Uh, including the uh, points which are functional and they do actually work properly and the actual locomotive just about everything on it is 3d printed the, the only thing that's not 3d printed is the electronics that runs it and the motor and also you'll see on there there's some coal that's actually real coal I've got on there and of course I webbed it. There are some bits to finish on, off on it as you can probably notice like for example the smoke the box doesn't have um, the actual locking mechanism at the front and that kind of stuff. So there are a few bits to do. I do have th this this wagon was totally 3d printed. Uh, it does actually have some brass axles inside of it. Uh, that's the only thing that's not 3D printed as well as the chain You can actually see the chain there that's used to connect um, To the locomotive that chain was made out of 0.9 millimeter uh, steel wire um, So there's been a lot of painting a lot of finishing uh, and it's took quite a lot of actual time to to get this finished. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you uh, the actual locomotive and how that runs. In fact let me just take a shot down here you can actually see from here what we're looking at and there's the actual track. I'll just lift this up slightly and get an idea and it's kind of nice and straight. Um, the track we're going to talk about some time in a later video how I kind of achieved that and how I made all of that yeah okay I'm just going to stop this video a second we'll get this locomotive ready to run I'll show you what that's like so here you can appreciate the size and the detail of this particular model now I found the plans to uh, the drawing plans for this locomotive in a, a railway modeler magazine from December 2008 I brought that back from England and I didn't realize this drawing was in there. If I had done, I would have started making this locomotive first because I think earlier on I, I mentioned I tried to make a different locomotive which was a lot more complex. This still took quite a bit of work but uh, it was a lot easier to make. Now if you're wondering, this is actually uh, radio wireless controlled and I can control it from a browser okay and so that and so it actually has got a little motor in it and it's got a little microprocessor controller in it um, which uh, can actually control um, it going forward backwards and the speed now another thing it's got if I turn this round uh, I don't know if you can see that You can actually see it's got a glowing fire in it. Now at the moment that's uh, nothing, it's simply static. I've yet to uh, program it so that it actually flickers on and off but it's not difficult to do. So all I've got at the moment is a yellow and red LED in there and that gives the impression of like a, a coal fire in there which is what I wanted basically. You can actually see that the um, cab has been um, very kind of carefully detailed. In fact, let me just have a look at this a second. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the water glasses and quite a lot of cab detail in there. There is some more things to add to it, um, but it's going it's going well. And the finish on this is actually surprisingly good. 
Um, I'm going to talk more about this locomotive later. Just about all of this has been done on a, on a filament printer. Uh, in fact, the wheels are plastic and they were done on a 0.4 nozzle, if anybody knows what that means in terms of, uh, you know, people that do 3D printing know what that means. And then uh, the main body was printed using a 0.2 uh, nozzle, but it wasn't all done in one go. I mean, this is one thing I did definitely find that if you try and make things all in one go, they don't tend to work out very well. So that's the locomotive there. Okay, so now it's hooked up. I'm going to see this running and let's see what it does. Okay, let's try it backwards. So let's see if these points actually work. So I'm going to flip this across. So this locomotive should now go down onto this particular point and onto here. I'm going to have to make sure that this is set as well, otherwise we'd end up derailing it. So let's just see what happens here. It's a nice smooth transition, which is good, which is what I like. Uh, backwards. And then I mentioned about the actual rounds were printed in plastic. Now, originally, I wasn't going to go that far. I really wanted to actually make the wheels for the locomotive uh, out of metal. Um, and I tried various different techniques. You can't, you know, print metal on, a, on a, an inexpensive 3D printer. Um, and I tried the various techniques to make metalize the wheels. Uh, we'll talk about that another time, but they weren't really successful. I decided that really I would actually need uh, a metal turning lathe to actually make the wheels properly. And I haven't got one, so I didn't. So I then went on to um, the second um, idea, which was if I can't have metal wheels, I'm going to have to have plastic wheels, which basically means uh, I, I can have plastic track then. And this track, um, I got the profile for the rail, uh, the actual rails itself. This profile here was uh, from the internet. There's like, um, there's a site that has, um, I think it's called Highway Railroad or railway highway or something like that it's got lo loads and loads and loads and loads of plans for um, actual track in terms of the actual profile and what the sleeper width was etc so I've got a lot of information from that uh, the points um, well that's a, that's that's a story in itself uh, this track took quite a lot of time to get right uh, the first track I made um, the actual curves and the points were too sharp so uh, you know I really should have thought about that more but I didn't and um, they worked great so I had to redesign the track and even then there were some problems in fact what I had to do was go to go online and find out how exactly how wide can this track really be and how far apart are those wheels supposed to be and what's the flanges on the wheel supposed to look like so they run on the track properly and thankfully there's something called the O-Gage Guild which I must admit I've never joined I think I would do someday um, 
and that has actually got some uh, specifications for track and O gauge, British O gauge wheels, which is fantastic. So yeah, the track did take quite some time and I found, you know, 32 millimeters across went very nicely. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be very slightly less than that in reality, but this worked fine. And once I got the wheels on the locomotive right, it was okay. Everything worked great. And um, so I was very pleased about that. The uh, wagon itself, this is designed, um, I got the drawings for these, uh, this wagon from the internet. Uh, there's a site called the Railway Clearing House, and if you look for the, I think it's a 12 ton mineral wagon, I spent a lot of time designing this um, in CAD, using the actual drawings from that site. And it took a lot of time, a lot of work. I did try originally making all the top part in one go. It didn't work out that well. Uh, we're going to talk about that sometime as well. Okay, so that's basically it for my model railway at the moment. It is not complete. It is not finished. I've got some bits to do on it. Um, just like with the locomotive. I've not put any ballast down. Uh, Railway enthusiasts will know exactly what I'm talking about when it talks about ballast because I really wanted to show what the sleepers look like on the track and that it's the same kind of same kind of height and size as what uh, British show gauge track would be. So um, so that's kind of really good. Okay, so that.